long has it been since we felt the warmth of Charles' band? <laughs> no conquest, no terrified screams. It has been too long, maniacs. Tell me of your progress watching Craw the Sea Monster on B Movie <laughs> Mania! <laughs> Yep, that works. Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania. And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Hello, and welcome to B Movie Mania. Uh, with me, as always, again, is Cross and holes. Now that you know what, <laughs> what that pun that pun doesn't even work. Never mind. I'm, I'm cutting that out. Jason Holes, everyone. Hey, I uh, brought brought a special beverage for tonight. Got the the craw drink right here. What I think he'd like a little Miller High Life Tall Boy. Mm, because craw's tall. I get it. Mm hmm. <laughs> Two hundred and no, I just have one in my fridge. That's really it. <laughs> All right, and I believe you. We also heard Mike Hayes. Bada boom, bada bing. I believe you are Craw's favorite B movie maniac. I'm the fucking Craw Daddy, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. And as you can probably tell from my failed Craw pun, there will probably be a lot of those. We watched Craw the Sea Monster. Craw. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Crawfuls. <laughs> uh, I think it's. I think it's crawful, Jay. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. <laughs> yep. And so it begins. So uh, before we get into quick takes, I just want to say that Craw is a 1998 kid-friendly kaiju movie. I didn't realize when I that when I picked it because I picked it based on the poster. Um, and well, you know, what? I'm not even going to talk about my feelings on it till we get to a little, little later. Uh, but it was directed by Aaron Osborne and Dave Parker and stars a whole bunch of kids that were really hoping to be featured in a Power Rangers slash Josh Kirby crossover. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I may, uh, you know, you might remember Allison Lohman from Drag Me to Hell. Oh, you know what? I've never actually seen that. I have that DVD somewhere. I think I stole. I think I stole it off a friend, or borrowed it and never returned. Oh, it and never. Yeah, got yeah. No, she starred in the movie, so yeah. she kind of uh, went on to to do some things. She plays Curtis, the psychic. The oh and, yeah. Well, I've got a. She's the PP specialist. Yes. Which, what? We'll, we'll, we'll get. Oh yeah. We'll okay. Get, never mind. We'll, yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit later. It took me a second. I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Allison Lohman, PP specialist. <laughs> I'm sure she's got that on her fucking CV. Of course. Yep. Uh, but uh, really, most importantly, Craw mm -hmm. was produced by Charles Band. Hey, uh, oh, did you boy. guys know that Paul and I met Charles Band? <laughs> <laughs> no, Jay. What's, what's retread that? I haven't heard it. Uh, yeah, it was at a, at a convention, a full moon horror convention <laughs> in Arkansas. We oh. met Charles Mann. We'll put the we'll put the photo in the oh post. God, I'm having deja craw right now. <laughs> well, you know what? Stop picking stuff with from Charles Band. <laughs> I, I, people, didn't, I didn't realize this was a Charles Band movie until yeah, full moon family. It. Yeah, when I saw, I saw the credits come up, I'm like, oh god damn, full moon. Okay, this is Charles. Yep, there's Charles Band's name right in the credits. And then you knew I was going to tell that and story. And I knew you were going to tell the story. And then I knew we would have to post the picture again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mike, does that does that stick in your craw just a little bit? Oh. I mean, it's just, it's just giving me a lot of day craw vu. <laughs> oh, this is oh, we're better. already down in the you know what we're gonna bottom of the barrel we're, here. We're gonna pad this episode out just like craw is padded out. Oh, and it's only an hour and nine minutes, and yet it still feels weirdly padded. AJ? Yeah? I think I think you misspoke. I think you meant to say it's 69 minutes. Oh, is it really? <laughs> You're right. You're right, okay. I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a very nice number. <laughs> yeah, I think they did that on purpose, kind of like the PP specialist. <laughs> but we'll get yep, into that. 
<laughs> gotta put some in there for the parents, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we before any more puns come uh, come out, let's let's do some quick takes. Quick takes. Well, Mike, why don't you uh, give us your quick take? Uh, before before I you guys smell something? What is that? Something's a little something's a little stinky. You guys smell that? <laughs> It something is it the movie? Is the movie that stinky? <laughs> oh no, it's just me. I'm a stinky boy. Sorry, I just I'm stinky. I haven't showered today. <laughs> is, is that your quick take? I just wanted listen. I wanted all those those single lovers out there that are looking for a real stench boy to know that much like Craw, I'm a I'm a real stinker. <laughs> that was a long way to get to that. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that that was some that was some build up, and I was with you every step of the way. Thank you, Jay. Quick take. Um, after watching this movie, I feel like I got kicked in the crotch. <laughs> god damn it! <laughs> oh god damn! It. Oh. What about you, Chris? Oh, I can't beat either one of you guys, so I'm just going to move on to the plot synopsis. What? <laughs> The quickest quick take of all. Nothing. Yeah, you could just give like a heartfelt answer. Yeah. It's craw. <laughs> Follow your heart, Chris. <laughs> Follow your craw, Jay. <laughs> there we go. I think that's good enough. That says it all right there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I really wish we could skip right to the end of this one, but uh, it's rating a- time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like my quick take. Hey, at least the movie was short. Didn't feel like it, but um, it didn't. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, I checked a few times. Yeah, and it, and like you said, it's it's like how many minutes, Mike? Sixty nine. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, still, I found myself pausing it and wondering how this felt so <laughs> slow. <laughs> God. There was there was a lot of padding in this movie. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. There was very little to the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think we should, we need to give a little bit of a background here, but I, we'll get into the padding in a little bit. But in every monster movie, I, you know, I'm like thinking they, there needs to be more shots of monsters destroying things. And this movie shows that, uh, no, no, that's not really <laughs> the case. Because there is so much of craw destroying shit in slow motion. And it just gets kind of like, oh, man, I swear it's like 68 of those 69 minutes is craw just bashing up some shit. Well, Chris, was it slow motion or was Kra just moving that slow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have notes about that. I, I, we'll get into that in a moment. I keep saying we're going to get into that in a moment. So let's just dive right in. Okay. So we start. Yes. So we start on the planet of Proyas or some shit, I think was the name of it. Yep. I didn't write it down. Yeah, it's the, it's the dark planet. Yeah, we're with, with Lord Doom and his henchman, Chamberlain. Chamberlain! Called, my lord? Tell me of your progress for getting us off this rock. Everything is ready, my lord. Your agent, the warrior beast Craw, is ready for transport. And uh, they are stuck on a very cold planet, and all they want is some warmth. You know, they've got enough cash to hire Craw to destroy a planet. You'd think they could afford a vacation to somewhere <laughs> a little more sunny. Yeah, they... They do hire the monster. I think this is the most, like, the only original thing in this movie is that these space villains, uh, technically, I guess Lord Doom is a space pirate he's referred to later, but, like, him and his minion hire a kaiju monster to destroy Earth, which usually they just release the monster, yeah. right? Yeah. He is yeah. known as a planet wrecker for hire. Uh-huh. I'm just wondering, like, how did, did they use PayPal to, to pay for Crawl? <laughs> What do you pay Craw in? <laughs> uh, buildings, I think. Cardboard buildings. I, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, he, Craw really comes across as someone who turned his hobby into a yeah. successful business. Like, he, he'd destroy mm-hmm. Planet 3 from Sun 97 for no reason, but 
Hell, if you're going to pay him to do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, he does what he needs to do. <laughs> I would like to see the Wachowskis make a $100 million version of this movie. I would be so down for that. Oh, my God. Guys, I have a little inform- little background information on Craw. That is, I don't know where these people got it, but I, I am on the Roleplay Grid uh, wiki right now and they have a, a, a an entry for craw and i don't know where all of this information came from wow. but it's extensive craw's personality can be characterized in case you wanted to role play as craw craw is the dumber one of the <laughs> duo zarkor but probably the strongest one he seems to be oh, amused yeah. by destroying cities yeah. but prefers to fight monsters instead <laughs> unlike zarkor he doesn't seem to mind fighting the military either though he is very powerful he will retreat away from a fight if it becomes too much for him does he really fight the military though there are some lines that say that the national guard is fighting him but you don't actually see any yeah. form of military in this movie what's the word from washington still no decision cabinet's still in emergency session What's our ETA on the Jolly Green Giant out there? If it stays on course half an hour, unless the National Guard can slow it down. What's the matter with those Washington people? They read the transmissions, don't they know what's going on here? Mr. Collins, that's the way it works. They make the policy, we carry it out. Yes, sir. Well, you also don't see any form of citizens no. that are screaming in the city when Craw's wrecking it. <laughs> you, you just hear, hear screaming. You hear them. No guys, I, I, I hate to bring it back to this role-playing thing, but where the fuck did they get this information? Uh, Craw was a monster found in space by the Tychrons and was captured by them. He, he was inactive for quite some time, but until what? the Krykons decided to use him, along with the other kaiju that they found, for their newest invasion. They, he's got a debut, he's got a par- something called Perishing in Phoenix mission. I, I wonder if people... His powers and abilities are here. Wow. There's trivia about him and none. And it's the picture of Craw. Like, this is Craw. Was this was this edited by Charles Band? I, I don't know. I have no idea where someone's going <laughs> to role play as this fucking monster in this one movie. What was the other monster you mentioned? His brother? Uh, uh, Zarkor, Zarkor or something? I did come across some uh, some references to another movie by the same, I think by, also by the uh, the main director, uh, Aaron Osborne. He made another movie called Zarkor, which used a lot of the same footage as yeah. Kraw. So we got a real monster verse going here. It is baffling. His powers and abilities are roar fire blasts, enhanced durability, enhanced endurance, and bite. Well, who made this? Who does it say? Does it say who entered the information? Because uh, who's just like, oh, there's this forum. I feel like I need I to enter know. Craw. I think there's like fan fic st- RPG r- games or something that have missions with him <laughs> or something. I'm just glad the stats don't stay That's extreme crazy. speed because. Yeah, then that that would put the whole page into doubt. No, <laughs> it's just he's his species as unclassified uh, amphibious humanoid. So humanoid. there's that two hundred and fifty foot tall humanoid. I don't know to to move us along a little bit. Thankfully, please do. Thankfully, the Planet Patrol is on the job to stop Craw. Welcome aboard, Curtis. So this is your first assignment. Yes, sir. I want to take this opportunity to introduce you to the other members of our team, Lieutenant Abel. Our engineer. Hey, kid. Patrolman Garth. What's up? So, uh, oh, yeah. we get a whole bit of exposition about uh, how they're on a quiet remote uh, outpost, and the new and there's a new recruit, Curtis, played by, uh, what was her name, Jay? Allison Lohman. Who is a double P specialist. According to your file, you're designated as a double P specialist? Yes, sir. Curtis, what is a double P specialist? Psychic power, sir. Psychic powers. A PP specialist. <laughs> but, uh, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, PP specialist. <laughs> yeah, I guess. God damn it. But um, as soon as the captain of the Planet Patrol, while this remote outpost of the Planet Patrol, says nothing bad ever happens here, well, guess what? Official alert. Unauthorized transport. Unauthorized transport. Something bad happens. Oh, couldn't have seen that coming. Jeez. I actually had them written in my notes as Exposition Patrol oh. also. <laughs> yes. That's that's all they're there for. Well, yep. they're there for that and to steal the glory at the very end. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I, I have thoughts about that. <laughs> well, so Crawl lands in the ocean and he starts destroying some shit right off the... No. 
No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. no. He just it's like 20 ocean. minutes before Cross shows up. <laughs> but we get to hear the Planet Patrol talk a bunch to each other for no reason. Yeah. Right, and keep in mind, again, 69-minute movie, Cross <laughs> not there for, like, the first quarter of the film. But the PP specialist decides uh, she uses her powers and realizes that Lord Doom is behind this, and... Um, Ah, but Lord Doom fires the pulse cannons, neutralizes the Planet Patrol space station, and their core is destabilized and will explode in like 38 hours or some some bullshit. Yeah, rendering them useless. Except for purposes of exposition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're wonderful at that. They're amazing. But they can't deal with this cross situation on Earth. Oh. Thankfully... One of the uh, one of the five <laughs> members of the Planet Patrol on this lonely outpost is on patrol, and actually doing his job, I guess. And that's Magyar. Who do we have in the reserves? Checking. Not good. The only agent we have in range is Mogyar, but he's on a scouting mission. He's got no supplies, no backup, and no weapons capable of stopping Kra. Magyar. <sighs> Guacamole crab. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good description of him. I would, I would, I'd maybe argue he's more of a guacamole clam. But, well, either way, either way, it's, yeah, it's gross. There's a hard shell and a lot of guacamole. Yeah. So he's on Earth, but he doesn't show up for a little bit either. So instead, yeah, we are baby. introduced to our Earthbound yeah. heroes. Big brain, big hair, big gut, big everything, and sassy waitress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. like Billy. Billy's the big brain, big gut guy. Is you some kind of big brain or something? Yeah. Big brain, big hair, big gut, big everything. And Alma is the sassy waitress. And they meet when she's trying to close up her diner. But uh, Bobby is just like, fuck it. I'm going for some... Decaf tea. He's in there. He's this big biker guy, and he just, just fucking wants some fucking decaf tea. But he's a dick about it. <laughs> just what an odd group, too. Like, these end up being the heroes of the whole thing. And I, I just found it odd that it was supposed to be kind of like a kid's film, and there weren't any real kid stars in it. It was just this big hairy biker and a waitress. And the yeah. guacamole clam. Well, I think they realized early on that the Planet Patrol is pretty useless as far as acting ability. We're just going to put them, use them for exposition, mm-hmm. and we'll put some decent actors in the role of the real heroes. Yeah. With Mogyar. I, I really like that Bobby, his name's Bobby, by the way, Bobby the biker guy. When he introduces himself, he says something like he's <laughs> been, uh, he's he, he, he worked for NASA for something, and he... For the Voyager program. Yeah, and he, yeah, he, he's got his... Uh, couple years of oh yeah he took a couple years of med school and all this stuff he keeps like talking about his stuff like that and i was like what is what how can this biker guy be so smart but then i stumbled on a little biker fact biker fact vroom, vroom. <laughs> oh, that's a nice that's that's a nice uh, sound bite man. i know right i'm glad chris did a really God good job it. with it um <laughs> well guys let me tell you something um, Dr. Ryuta Kawashima wrote a, 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 did a study called The Relationship Between Motorcycle mm. Riding and the Human Brain. And he found that riding a motorcycle every day might actually keep your brain functioning at peak condition. Uh, the study demonstrated that the riders between the age of 40 and 50 were shown to improve their levels of cognitive functioning compared to a control group after riding their motorcycles daily to Ooh. their workplace for a mere two months. It's something to do with, like, the fact that commuting hmm. normally is easy, but when you make it a motorcycle, it, it's, it becomes much more difficult because you're going faster and you have to navigate certain ways. And supposedly that is helping uh, keep your brain uh, nimble and, and your, your cognitive processes flowing. Well, did he also do any follow-ups about how many of those people have splattered their head on the sidewalk? Jay, they wear helmets. Jeez. Uh, not all of them. Well, everyone in this trial, I'm sure, was very safe about it. I was going to say, how do you think they I studied so. their brains, Jay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they scraped Whoops. them up. Nice. <laughs> all right, we've just alienated our biker audience. No, we said they're smart. At least I did. They can come after Jay if they want. Jay lives at... Hey, I got no problem with it. Well, amongst other things, Bobby has excellent hearing. And he can hear <laughs> Magyar's spaceship crashing through the atmosphere way before Alma That's can true. hear anything. So we've got a pyramid crashing right into the middle of the diner. And out pops our hero Magyar. 
So have we really described Mog- Mogiar yet? I mean, we're a guacamole crab. He's a, he's a, he's a fucking puppet. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, there's nothing about this movie yeah, that he's requires a puppet. Mogiar to be a puppet, other than Charles Band's apparent love of puppets. Sure. He's not that bad of a puppet. I mean... No, he's actually pretty good. He's puppet. not great, I mean, but he also speaks with a comical Italian accent. Buonasera, gente della terra. Io mi chiamo Moggia. Oh. Well, there's a reason for that. Well, I'm not going to say a reason. There's some some very shaky justification for it. But he was supposed to land in fucking Naples. Yeah. Because there is a uh, a laboratory that has the materials he can use to build a weapon to defeat Craw. And so he has that, he, he's, well, not, he does, not only does he have an accent, but he speaks Italian when we first meet him. Like, he's straight up Italian, guacamole <laughs> crab. Yeah, yeah. And then Bobby gives him some books on English, and then he, he learns English that way, but his first language is Italian, so of course he speaks like Mario for the entire yeah. movie. This could be a bad problem. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> But we're not even finished introducing our characters yet, because there are some men in black. Yeah, kind of. I mean... <laughs> and red berets. And red berets, and like and red sleeves sometimes, yeah. and I don't know, that's a weird, lo- weird look yeah. for all of them. They, they're they trying to present themselves as sort of good guys, but they're, they're everything they do, they say, is for the good of mankind, but everything they... But if you pay attention to what their actions... They're fucking helping Craw. Totally. They don't seem interested in stopping Craw. They seem interested in stopping the good guys. Yeah. Yeah. They're more They're more about chasing down Magyar than chasing down Craw. Craw isn't hard to find. Yeah. 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 Craw's fucking running rampant <laughs> at some so. point, finally. And, like, they're just not <laughs> caring. They're just going for this fucking... And this is why this is why I think he's a clam, Jay, because he has no legs. He has these little hands, but no legs. They have to carry him everywhere he they go, take him. I mean, yeah. this is partially because he's a fucking puppet. But yeah. <laughs> there's a great line later on when, uh, in the, uh, well, when they get to the nuclear power station trying to stop Craw, and one of the men in black uh, kind of comes in and recaptures him. And Mogir's just like, I don't want to fall off of the table. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's, he's stuck on a That's fucking table. It's a pretty good bet. Yeah, and th- about this time, like 20 minutes in, Craw finally starts stomping finally. on things. And he's Slowly. crushing a truck stop and cuddling a big Paul Bunyan. <laughs> yeah, he's full you miniature know, He's set. trying to just like yeah. deep throat a Paul Bunyan and then... And then this this <laughs> gas truck comes over and just like sees him, and I guess understandably then like loses control of the truck, panics and crashes into the gas station, which gets us a beautiful explosion. I mean, it's massive. <laughs> yeah, mm, huge. I, I, I do want to say I think the 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 model work is is pretty it, good. It really for, is. You know, mid nineties straight yeah. to video. It's I, enjoyable. I it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I just wish it were. I don't even know how to say this. I wish it weren't so slow. I wish Croc could have moved a little faster so we get shorter scenes and um, not felt like it was padding out the runtime. Yeah. Yeah. Because you get a lot of Croc smashing up some buildings and (laughs) God damn it, it does not fit with any, it doesn't fit, it doesn't, it breaks up the flow of the movie. Yeah. And and while the model work isn't terrible, it's not spectacular either. Like nothing amazing is happening. So it's not like Mm -hmm. you're you're happy that it's coming back. You're just not too upset, I guess. Right. And and again, there's never any people in the shots of Croc. So you don't you don't get that like perspective of people running from him. Yeah. So eventually, the Mibs capture Magyar, Bobby, and Alma, take them to their headquarters. Sir, something's happened to Magyar. Please, make us something good if you can. Well, sir, Magyar's been taken prisoner by some local Earth government. Uh, we get some uh, interrogation, a very civil interrogation. There's coffee, milk, no sugar. And, uh... Decaf tea for you. There you go. Yeah, it's very polite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then <laughs> in between all of this, we get some shots of Lord Doom again. And then there's the Planet Patrol. And then Craw destroying shit. And it's just like, it's very disjointed. Yeah. There is the ultimate part that happens around here. Once I think it's once Craw gets to New Jersey, right? Because that's where he's breaking up. Because it takes place in New Jersey. 
I got no sense of that. Well, no, but they just no. In, in no way does it seem like it is. But that's what yeah. they say. The power plant is in New Jersey. <laughs> so. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. But but the, when he gets to the big city, when Croc gets to the big city, it, there's this <laughs> really beautiful shot that someone else may describe if they want. But it pops up some cross promotion <laughs> with its sister oh. movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's it jump, good. It jump cuts from something. I forget where it's at, but it jump cuts to just the logo from to the 1998 Godzilla film on the screen. <laughs> That's just it. And then it like slowly backs out and you see Craw burst through an entire building. So this is supposed to be a entire building size billboard that Craw just bursts through the Godzilla sign. And it. It kind of is genius. Yeah, that <laughs> it, was that pretty good. cannot be legal either. Like they no, had to have just gone copyright that. infringement like oh, crazy. God. Yeah, there's no way that they could they could have done. Yeah, that. I mean sure. Charles, but it's funny. Charles Band has been around long enough that what are they going to do? He's going to roll the yeah. dice. Yeah. yeah, you think Matthew Broderick's going to come after Charles Band? <laughs> no, personally, <way>. yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> If only there was a Green Day song that was in this movie, too. <laughs> There's uh, also a pretty fun shot of a newsman uh, on the TV reporting about the beast rampaging through the city. <laughs> yeah. And he's apparently, like, he's coming this way. And he's, like, apparently, like, right underfoot, I guess. You don't really see much. But it's implied <laughs> that the newsman just dies. He's trash <laughs> under a building or something like that <laughs> by Craw. Like, that is some dedication. I really appreciate that. That's another, you know, that's two people in this movie that love their jobs. Craw <laughs> and the newsman. <laughs> well, he did until, you know, he didn't. What you are hearing now from behind me is the sound of that animal as it moves through the center of town, literally knocking buildings down as it advances. Anyway, so we get some shots about the Mibs complaining about Washington's response to Craw and how, but they, I mean, they're not really doing much to really, you know, help out. No, no, nobody does anything. Planet Patrol just sits around trying to fix their ship. The military's still just trying to figure stuff out. Like, it just, it's slow. Well, they, they evacuate as soon as Craw gets close to their headquarters. And they just they they just leave Bobby and Alma right right there in prison. Magyar's escaped by now, but they're like, "Fuck it, we're out of here." Yeah, well, Mag- Magyar helps them go through the vents in the guess. ceiling. I yeah. guess I don't know how he got there since they carry him everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, and how two full grown adults get up through there, well, but it, it happens. Especially okay. that beefy biker. <laughs> He's big gut, big everything. <laughs> yeah. well, well, that gets to probably my favorite part of the movie is they're trying to escape, and I guess the. The headquarters is underground. Even though they show them going to a house earlier, they're underground in the city. Alma comes up, climbs up this ladder, gets Magyar out, and is telling Bobby, Hey, hurry up, Bobby. Come on. It's clear. It's clear. And then we cut to another shot of Craw for about five minutes destroying some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he knocks over a building and Alma's like, It's not clear. Go back down, Bobby. Go back down. <laughs> like, it takes Bobby's big ass gut. Ten minutes to climb up this goddamn five foot ladder, <laughs> and Craw just sneaks up on him. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you uh. couldn't hear him from five miles away. His <laughs> Craw, <laughs> right? <laughs> crushing buildings. It's fine. It's peaceful out here. Don't worry. Come on. Oh yeah. shit! Oh god, he's a fucking sneaky bastard. Yeah, yeah. Oh. he's a real sneak Craw. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> that, was, that was pretty Damn weak. It. Oh, oh. All right, this actually leads into my least favorite part of the movie. Oh, I hope it's my favorite part. I, I don't see how it could be, but let's find out. Um, so what they have to go, now that, that Alma and Billy and, and uh, Magyar are free, they have to hide from the poli- the military, because clearly the, the military has nothing better to do than to hunt them down. So Bobby shaves his head and his huh. beard in order to hide and I, hey, Jay, do you think he? What do you think he shaved anything else? Yeah. Do you think he went all out in the disguise? He's, he's committing to the disguise. <laughs> he's got a big everything, so I'm sure that bush was out of control. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I see. I loved Bobby's look in this movie. Yeah. It's like the main dude is just this big burly biker guy with big huge hair and a big huge beard. I thought that was so cool. And then when they shaved him, he's just like, all right, he's a bald guy. Like yeah. I don't know. I, I really liked his look, and I was upset that they um, that he changed it. I agree. That's also my least favorite part. Yeah. 
Okay. But but then he wouldn't be able to blend in with the scientists as well later on. I mean, that yeah. that, pocket pro- that pocket protector he has and lab coat would not go well with that beard. I suppose, but I still mourned the loss of his big hair. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they'd made more of a big deal over that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. Look, so my favorite part was right around here, too. Uh, <laughs> where they're, they're hiding at... His Bobby's house, maybe. I think it's a ho- just a hotel. Okay, so there's somewhere, and they find out that what they find out what Cross uh, Cross got to make a thing right, and, and Bobby obviously worked on the Voyager mission, so uh, I did some work as an intern on the Voyager team back when I was a grad student. He knows a lot of stuff, and he knows the power plant can make <laughs> stuff, and he finds out that Mogyar heard the the Mibs make a phone call to the power plant. Mm-hmm. So he finds that out, and so Bobby's calling some someone calls someone on the phone, and and Magyar's like, "What are those beeps?" And he's like, "That's a phone. That's how it works." And What's those like, the beeps? Though? I can I can remember those phone <laughs> those beeps, and so he just knows how to dial the fucking phone. I mean, he plays in the beeps back or whatever, but he's like, "Oh, that means it's this." Like instantly, he can just play back the beeps, and it's stupid, but also kind of clever. I mean, sort of. Yeah. Kind of. What I love about that, though, is it's a fucking 1-800 number. Yeah, that also is the best. 1-800. We've got, got a toll-free call to get all the nuclear materials to make this <laughs> this craw-killing weapon. Well, and the thing they're trying to do, right, they need a nuclear facility. They have eight hours to build a $20 million weapon. <laughs> and they're just like, no problem, let's do it. Hey, yeah. hey. Big brain, big beard, big belly, big everything, Jay. Big action. Big money. That's right. So they somehow actually do this. They get this $20 million weapon made in under eight hours to try to shoot Craw with it. Hey, that's taxpayer money at work, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's efficiency. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, when most of your taxpayers have died in the slow motion chaos, you got to make the money stretch. You got to do what you can. Well, you know, they they take the gun too and they're they're about to shoot Craw with it, but something uh-huh. goes wrong. We have a red flashing light. Damn it! What's wrong? I don't know. A loose connection, I hope. The one swear word. We got a swear word yeah. in this movie. Oh. <laughs> yep, don't appreciate that, Charles. Also the weapon control panel. Well, everything about this weapon looks like jank shit. It the control panel is like something from like what? Mike, they only had eight hours to make it. Yeah, but it's on like a nineteen <laughs> fifties panel of like blinking lights and knobs. It's so fucking stupid. They did not have access to the Men in Black's user interface experts to make up a mock up a wireframe that they right. could engineer. Yeah, come on. Let's see your twenty million dollar weapon in eight hours from now. Hey, you know what? That's what I went to school for. I'll get you a GUI that makes sense. In eight hours, Mike? Nothing else. I can't do anything else. <laughs> just well, make the gooey. Just, we, make we've the mocked gooey up the weapon. It doesn't really exist, but we've got a fantastic interface. It's all that matters, baby. <laughs> yeah. That'll be your tax dollars at my work. Uh, I think in between here, we've uh, we've realized that uh, we get a, an exposition shot of the planet pa- planet pa- <laughs> planetary patrol. <laughs> those guys. Yeah, you remember those guys? They, they're in the movie. And, and this is really confusing to me because the uh, the engi- the main engineer there comes out saying the repairs are finished, but the core will still be hypercritical in five minutes. Like, yeah. what kind of shitty repair? Did you spend all your time on the user interface and not fixing the bullshit that's going to explode? Well, and also there's there's the main guy, right? The main planet patrol commander. Who, I, I don't remember his name. It's like, uh, it's uh, Rurik. Rurik. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. He seems to be sort of anti-psychic, because remember, there's a psychic in this movie. Yeah. yeah. And he, he was seemed to be kind of distrusting of the whole psychic thing. But at this point in the movie, he tells her to literally try anything psychic. Yeah. <laughs> just try anything. Because everything's going to just be destroyed. So she has to, like, reach out, and she... Finally, is able to interact with Craw like interplanetary distances, and is able to stop him from moving. She just like holds okay, him still. Okay, you say that, Jay, but if you watch the movie, she kind of does her little pee pee power stuff, and Craw yeah. steps on a truck. I 
I think it's the the Men in Black's command truck. Cross okay. steps on the truck. Now, the, she implies that she stopped Craw. I just think Craw just really hurt his foot stepping on that goddamn truck because he's barefoot. Yeah. It's like, and oh, she, okay. she just took credit for it. Just like everything the Planetary Patrol does, they take credit for everything else. They steal the glory. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a valid theory. That's a really good theory. I mean, Jay, you, your your kids are getting old enough, man. You had you've stepped on a Lego, I assume now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, shoes, yeah. Legos. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that shoes. I don't. That shoes don't hurt, but Lego. You step no, on a Lego. Can. <laughs> oh, can't. What kind of fucking shoes your kids got? Very very sharp uh, ones. Knife yeah. shoes you're giving these kids. <laughs> knife shoes. <laughs> Preparing for fury mode. <laughs> <laughs> he studied the blade shoe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, your point. Yes, I've stepped on things that hurt. Well, I just mean like that. Chris is that. I think that valid. It's Chris's theory. Yeah, he just no, basically I, stepped on a Lego. Yeah, I mean, no, he howls in pain and everything. It's right yeah, there. I don't, Jay, I don't know why you're such a skeptic on this sort of stuff. I, man. I, I agreed the entire time. We saw it. It's on film, Jay. I, I don't believe the PP powers exist. I'm going to go with what I have evidence for. Yeah, just we saying. have it just on saying. film. Yeah, on yeah. actual. Yeah, no, film, I agree. Jay, I don't know why you're such a naysayer. <laughs> um. <sighs> anyway, let's move on. Forget Jay, Chris. What, what happened? Uh, what else happened um, in this movie? So uh, Bobby fixes the weapon. He he the connects the power. Uh, the power lines, and they destroy Crawl, right? That? Yep. No, oh, right. No. Because the fucking men in black show up and ruin everything. Nope. It's me who's got you. Drop it. Uh, the guy in charge of the Mibs, he stops Bobby from reconnecting the loose connection there's another guy who recaptures Alma and Magyar. It's your classic all is yeah. lost moment where everything looks like it's going to fail. It, it almost makes you think, did Kral take some of that destruction money and subcontract out to these people to oh, stop anyone that could, that could maybe be. save the day? That's a good theory. You know, That's really going theory. deep with this pretty, one. Pretty smart business, really. I mean, <laughs> Put that on the wiki. I mean, Kral, Kral if nothing else, Kral is a businessman. Well, business yeah. kaiju. No, yeah, uh, this is also where, we, where Alma gets to be a badass, because because she like escapes and then like oh yeah, beat beats up not you know basically beats up the head Mib. Well, I think she she hits him with a pipe or something, right? Yeah, she, I mean she yeah. comes in there hard and she like makes Bobby run away, not run away, but like go Bobby fix the power problem, yeah. and yeah. and she's you know she she kicks some ass and it's pretty great. I like that a lot. But, although um, I mean when she does. You know, at, I mean, to be fair, she had the element of surprise, and once the the guy in charge kind of got to his senses, there he 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 does end up. You know, he pistol whips her, knocks her out. I'm pretty sure he killed her, to be honest, because you don't see I mean, you don't see her again. I don't know why you need to discredit what she did. Well, no, no, no. It was very admirable, and she was a, <laughs> she was a badass. We have swearing yeah. in this yeah. film. We have violence oh, against women. God. Yeah. <laughs> Some objectionable content. We get to where Bobby finally he's able to reconnect the wires, but the head the head Mib is like, uh uh uh, don't do that. But Bobby does it anyway, and electricity just courses through his body like No Don't I mean, I'm pretty sure Bobby also dies. Yeah, he palpatines himself. It's pretty good. He's probably dead. He's probably totally. dead. <laughs> and uh, that destroys Crawl, no, right? The no. We got to get the Planet Patrol in on this. The Planet Patrol had to, like, steal the thunder out of those people. Like, it is so <laughs> fucking stupid. It, it really is. You know, you could have probably removed the whole Planet Patrol subplot, practically. I mean, you just give Craw a different story. You can keep Mog Mogwai, or whatever his name is, and, uh, you know, have the mm -hmm. people do the, the good work. Yeah. Well, but but then you wouldn't get the mid '90s, young '20s ish Power Rangers slash Josh Kirby crowd to watch the Just movie. Cast some; they could be the people <laughs> on the ground. It, they it, could they yeah. could be the big beard, big belly, big everything. You could have done it. So, so what <laughs> happens is the 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 uh, Abel, the the engineer on the ship, realizes she can fix the ship now because she has this idea, and so the weapon fires. It zaps Bobby, and then the fucking, you know, weapon shooting Craw, who's been basically just standing in front of it for 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> and then, like, somehow, they, the planetary patrol 
redirects the power from the weapon being shot at Krog, because that's what's most important. Mm-hmm. And yeah. to save an entire planet instead of the four people on a ship. And it redirects it to the <laughs> ship, which recharges the power. And so then they shoot another laser at Kra, which is what kills Kra. It, it is so deflating. Yeah. So, so basically, they take a pretty straightforward climax to this whole movie and turn it into some sort of weird Rube Goldberg kind it's of laser just, beam. Yeah. Unnecessary. Planet Patrol propaganda. Mm-hmm. Unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't even. I got, a, I, I got better ways to do it, but who fucking cares? Anyway, what else next? All, all I got to say is I think that Lord Doom got his deposit back because Craw did not finish the job. No. Oh, yeah. You guys remember Lord Doom's in this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Lord Doom's in this. So, another failure. Yes, my Lord Doom. Because we get a nice uh, little, uh, well, we get a one last fight scene because he can't have the, you know, the exposition patrol just exposition their way through the movie. They've got to go through some lame ass fight scene at the very end yeah. to capture Lord yeah. Doom and Chamberlain. Where they put they put a backstory between Doom and Captain Rurik right yeah. at the end. It's a real Highlander 2 final fight scene kind of situation. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, thanks for the callback. Yeah, you know. I'm pretty sure yeah. Rurik gives Doom a nut shot too in that fight. <laughs> Probably. Probably. I think he does. I like that we I like we find out Doom's got this kind of cool mask. Uh, but he's just also wearing black garbage bags as clothing. <laughs> Is he? Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> it's, it's ba- I mean, it's like some sort of rubber latex suit or something, but it's real baggy. It like fucking looks so stupid. It's like they repurposed the sets from uh, Planet Pussycat. Yeah, except that was better. <laughs> that was way better. Oh, God. Oh, so, uh, yeah, so Chamberlain and Lord Doom are captured and put into a dog kennel because that's that's humane. That's what you do. That's what you do. And um, mm-hmm. But Chamberlain kind of like... Pickpocketed the key off the captain's uh, skin tight bodysuit. Yeah, yeah. My lord. What? Revenge might be easier if we use this. <laughs> Is that what that was? Yeah, that wily little Chamberlain. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, did you see those, those dog kennels they were put in, Mike? They were very. I don't know. They're just regular dog kennels. Never mind. I was going somewhere with that one, but you know what? It's a fucking bone key. <laughs> I'm assuming that a dog, a dog kind of chewed a uh, a dog that was kept in the kennel at some point chewed a key into the bone to let itself free. I guess that's what happened. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really care because yeah. uh, I don't think they ever they ever made a sequel to sure. this. Right? You can tell they were going for a series mm. on this. Oh one. yeah, especially by the yeah. way it ended. I'm pretty sure the entire line of family full moon films didn't really take well, off. Well, Josh Kirby did. Mm, did it? Well, I mean, it, it had mm. six things. There were six movies. Yeah. But finally, we get an epilogue for Magyar is finally on the same set as the rest of the Planet Patrol. And uh, it turns out he left his language settings in the mothership, which was destroyed earlier, ah, yeah, which we yeah. didn't really get into. So he's stuck with this, the shitty Italian accent. Ah, uh, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, but you know who's not there and who you never see again? As I think we <laughs> said earlier, Bobby and Alma. No, gone. Yeah. You're just main gone. Characters. Yeah. Your main get, characters just not there. Magyar gives us a throwaway line about how he worked things out with the government people and Bobby and Alma are okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure those are lies. Yeah. He's got to make sure those, <laughs> those early 20 somethings uh, don't feel bad about, you know, stealing the power mm-hmm. and blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Magyar I mean, sanitized it yeah. for, for all of yeah. them. Because I'm pretty sure that pistol whip gave Alma a pretty her- terrible concussion. Yeah. She's dead. She's yeah. dead. And Bobby, fuck, he's oh, yeah. he is right. a blackened corpse. Yeah. Yep. Crispy critter. Yeah. The movie ends, though, with, with Magyar's, like, whatever joke he makes, and then they just laugh for 10 seconds and then credits. <laughs> 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 it's, oh boy. It's a whole ending. And but then but when that happened, I'm like, oh, this means it's over, right? And it was. It was over. It was. It was actually over. Yeah. Hooray! Ah. Oh. So I gotta say this. Wait, really... wait, Chris. Oh, Chris, go ahead, Mike. Did you mean? Hukra! <laughs> Hukra! <laughs> you know, I just want to say this seems like it was two movies that they edited into one movie, which is not uncommon with Charles Band. No. 
They've made another see. movie that was a handful of movies <laughs> yeah. edited together. So it's like they took like had they had some monster destruction scenes. They had this Planet Patrol thing. I'm sure they were trying to make into a series, and they've got the Earthbound stuff, and they're all so separated out until that very last scene where you get Mogyar talking about some, you know, oh, everybody's okay to tie it all together. But everything seemed very separated. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, that, there at no point, there were sets that just never, characters never crossed paths in certain things. Like, <laughs> no. It was very I mean, okay, I, I, I will say, like, even as thin as it was, everybody did have something to do but it, it wasn't That's like it, it wasn't tight. Like it, you want the characters to interact, so uh, probably still the characters probably still had more to do than uh, all of the main characters in Game of Thrones. But <laughs> that's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right then. I don't know where to go from there, except to rating time. Rating time. What are we rating this in? All right. You know, I thought about this for a little while. I, okay, no. You know what? I had no time to actually think about this. <laughs> uh, but I think, I think it's pretty clear what we need to rate this in. And I think this is the only time we'll ever get a titular rating scale. We're going to rate this movie from 1 to 100. Cross! <laughs> perfect. Okay. All right, Jay. How about going first? Oh, man. Um... <sighs> I, I just don't have much to say about this, is the thing. Um, it's pretty bland, and it feels slow. <laughs> Do you guys hear that? Especially yeah. when there are children involved. <laughs> I'm not cutting that out. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is part of your review. That's fine. <laughs> that is my child screaming. And that's a little bit about how, how I felt when I was watching the movie. Um, no, I... I found it kind of bland, kind of slow. It's not something I would watch again. It's not something I would watch again at a party. Um, you know, like a lot of these movies where we say, oh, it'd be fun with friends. I don't really think this one would be a lot of fun with friends. Um, <laughs> I did enjoy the the how odd the main characters were. So I was mostly fine with Magyar. He's, he's fine, I guess. Um, I did like Bobby and Alma. Um, so, you know, have I seen worse? Oh, definitely. Um, and it is mercifully short. So uh, I'm going to just go uh, 44 cross. All right. That, uh, that's pretty good. Mike? I mean, what do you I think? can only reiterate what Jay said. It's, it's not that interesting, <laughs> but potentially if you have like a kid, you want to get into a kaiju movie. It maybe has got some stuff they might be interested in. Like, there's some <laughs> uh, interesting things that don't make any sense that maybe the kid would like. I don't know. So, yeah, I just... Uh, uh, 50 cross. All right. <laughs> just All right. middling, just middling. <laughs> like, I, I, who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This might be one of the least divisive movies we've ever done, because I agree with everything both of you said. Uh, there were some interesting ideas, a couple interesting ideas, a couple characters that were kind of fun, but they didn't really ultimately do anything. Uh, it is definitely not the worst of Charles Band's children movies. Uh, so I'm going to rate this way higher than Josh Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Mike and give this fifty cross. <laughs> it's very it's it's very middling. All right, that's the perfect word for it. There's nothing really. It's just there. I wouldn't. I watched. I had to watch this a couple times, and even then, oh, man, it just doesn't hold anyone's attention. Yeah, I mean, in a, I mean, I I argue that it would be good at a party in the background where no one is absolutely paying attention to the TV. It's just <laughs> part of the environment. Yeah. You just occasionally look up and see yeah. <laughs> Craw hugging a Paul Bunyan. <laughs> <laughs> Slow motion destruction. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that's about it. Okay, Mike, I think you're up next. Let's find out what's on the next B-Movie Mania. Uh, Craw! <laughs> on the next episode of B-Movie Mania... <laughs> All right, guys, buckle the fuck up. Oh boy. 
because Count Draculon and his Nazi vampire forces seek to take over Earth what? during the Hell Wars. A soldier is killed <laughs> attempting to fight the Count and then transformed into Manborg after his body is fitted with robotics. Oh, oh, Once sweet. Manborg yeah. becomes an active in Megadeth City, he meets with the Resistance fighters to fight against Count Draculon. <laughs> in the 2011 film written and directed by Stephen Kostansky, I think I said it wrong, Manborg. Manborg. Oh, boy. Have you guys oh seen Manborg? <laughs> I have never seen. I've I seen, know of Manborg. Like, yeah, I've I've seen like I can picture the poster or something. I've seen. You some guys were talking about the void earlier today, and he he has gone on. Yeah. I think with his his writing partner uh, Jeremy Gillespie to 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 write and create the void, which is a much higher budget film, I believe. Uh, but holy <laughs> shit, guys, Manborg's gonna be a fucking hit. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> have have awesome. you seen it before? Yes, I have. <laughs> oh, nice. This is okay. a guaranteed enjoyment, I believe. <laughs> Very nice. I, th I think we need a bit of that after... Uh, Cry! After Cry! Hell yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. I believe this is the part where we put in our plugs for t-shirts and ratings and... Send us an email, even though we've never actually answered an email, unless Mike isn't telling us something. <laughs> listen, I've got, uh, listen, got all, all, I've got all the fan base out there that that feels I'm um, their favorite B movie maniac. They write me, I write back. We're all we're on the same page. Uh huh. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks for including us, yeah. Mike. Well, they don't really care about you. Oh, oh all right. <laughs> Guess I'm okay with that. So, um, yeah. Also, uh, check out our movie, Late Afternoon of the Living Dead, on YouTube, because mm -hmm. that's there now. And uh, enjoy. And hopefully, we'll see you next time on V Movie Mania. Crash! <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo!